All right. So if we scroll down to the note that Lord has left, you said she sent this out on an email, right? To her fans. Yeah, the newsletter. Yeah. Newsletter. All right. She says, basically for artists, promoters, and crews, things are at an almost unprecedented level of difficulty. It's a storm of factors. Let's start with three years worth of shows happening in one. This is a reference to the pandemic and it has been crazy. I cannot, cannot disagree with it. Every event that I had been going to before the pandemic, when I went to it, like the first one after this year, crazy tripled in audience yeah. at least yeah. ridiculous and that's not even just music by the way like almost any event right uh one music fest was crazy invest fest was crazy concert a lot of concerts i went to so add let me see let's start with three years worth of shows happening in one add global economic turn downturn and then add the totally understandable wariness of concert goers around health risk all right on the logistical side though there's things like immense crew shortages. Here's an article from something in New Zealand. We can skip that. Extremely overbuilt trucks and tour buses and venues, inflated flight accommodation costs, ongoing general COVID costs, and truly mind-boggling freight costs. To freight and stage across the world, wait, to freight a stage across the world can cost up to three times the pre-pandemic price right now. I don't know shit about money, but I don't know enough to understand that. <laughs> but I do know enough to understand that no industry has profit margins that high. I'm going to agree with you. You don't know much about money because <laughs> their prices, they don't have that high profit margin. Their prices have, in have increased, too. That's why it's so high for, for them. But this whole pocket right here is, is why everything costs so much. This is what she's referencing. So the fans, like y'all are paying what y'all are paying, right? But at the same time, extremely overbooked trucks, right? Which means those people are hard to get a hang of, mm -hmm. which means the prices of them have also increased because they can be far more selective with their work. You got to pay for this COVID cost and safety measures that you didn't have to pay for before, right? Mm -hmm. Which probably... Not only was it not fully accounted for because this is a new thing, yeah. right? So it's harder to account for it, but it's not as efficient as well, which means it's at the costlier side of the curve. Five years from now, COVID safety measures will probably be a lot cheaper because it's been done. You know, people have made it efficient, the, the plastic or whatever, you know, it goes into it, just like it took a while for Co at home COVID test, right? Yeah. I was in a Walgreens the other day and now it's just right there. You can buy it. But before the government had to ship it. Yeah. So it's that type of thing. Call things are costing more money. All right. This is what the artists are dealing with on the same side. Let's skip forward. Ticket price would have to increase to start accommodating even a little of this, but absolutely no one wants to charge their harried and extremely compassionate and flexible audience any more fucking money. Nearly every tour has been besieged with cancellations, postponements and promises and letdowns and audience have shown such understanding and such faith that between that and the post COVID wariness about getting out there at all, scaring people away by charging the true cost ain't an option. All we want to do is play for you. So what is she saying right here? Bruh, our costs have gone up significantly. But we can't charge the fans no more money, which means our mar margins have shrank crazy. We're making way less money for the same shit, yeah. right? Because, hey, who are fans? You know any fans that are going to pay three times the cost after we just went through the pandemic? Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's a tough, that's a little tough cookie to be in a rock and a hard place. Yeah, bro. I mean, I with that part, like, I always respect artists for not wanting to charge their fans more. But I feel like as fans, bro, we're smart enough to understand that, like, sometimes it just it, – it is what it is, right? Like, if you, if you have an artist you care about and you like enough, it might shrink the amount of people that fuck with you because of that. But, like, we going to get it. You know what I'm saying? But, but bro, I think you're missing a point, though. <sighs> you can respect the artist for not wanting to charge, but I think the reality is they can't charge more. Do you think it's a cap on what they can charge? Yeah. It's a cap to anything. Like an industry cap? No. Uh, realistic. Oh, like a, what uh, like a consumer cap. cap. Yeah. yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, that's why I said it, it probably would, like, let's say, I don't know how much her tickets were. Let's let's say her tickets were $300. I don't okay. know. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. Right? And let's say she bumped it to five. Okay. So 300 maybe she sells 20,000 tickets. At five, maybe she sells 
fourteen thousand. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like I well, I I'll do the math in my head real quick. I might have actually just proved your point <laughs> doing, doing that math that way or breaking it down. But I don't know, man. I feel like the people that that like you enough are going to be okay with it. And I mean, to me, it makes me also think about the Taylor Swift conversation a little bit. I know we keep going back to her, but I'm pretty sure an artist of her size is probably having the same issues, right? Because yeah. all the things that Lord mentioned being a part of the expense, that's that, that's 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 rich artist problem. Like, come on, bro. Like that average artist ain't don't even. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't even think about the cost of ship a stage. Set bro, the fly a stage yeah. across the world. Yeah. I did. I'm like, dang, bro. You didn't just like get a local stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, but Tyler did a really good job of pushing everything back to violent murder cell, right? So it's, she probably is taking her touring and just lumping it in with her marketing costs. Like, okay, it's gonna cost me, I don't know, a million dollars to put this tour together. I'm only gonna make about 800K. I'm down 200K on the debt aspect of it. But if I get all these people to buy vinyls, buy merch, buy t shirt talk about me stream, then my upside on everything else jumps up 100% or something. And I'm good now, you know what I'm saying? She alludes to that a little bit, right? Yeah. Later on in this, but I think there's multiple factors for artists and why they can't just up the prices mm. because we can get deeper into this as we like finish it out. But all right. Yes. We know in, in product sales, there is an effect where you can up the price, have less customers and sometimes make more money. Mm. Not, not a, let alone just the same. Right. So that's a real thing. Right. So she might have those people who love her so much and they can come across the money that still go. Yeah. But one artist have this brand impression that they have to be able to uphold. Right. Yeah. Certain fan, like people don't want to look like it's a money grab. Why am I paying this much to go to your concert? And we're dealing with inflation on top of that. Right. Which is also a, another thing. Um, compressing profits. So then you have a brand like Lord. The Royals? Yeah. You the girl that make Royals? Yeah. We don't mess with the Royals, but we going we going to charge <laughs> this check <laughs> from the peasants like come on, man. Like which I always thought that she was slick cuz like she was becoming a royal by with a song that yeah. was going against Royals, but you know, whatever. I'm like, "All right. <laughs> it's a finesse. Y'all are being finessed." Um <laughs> but like you can only you can only go up but so much because people it's good it's just bad PR. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I think that's what it comes down to. It's bad PR. And should you stop your show? Should you just not go on tour at all? Or should you just make it more intimate? Uh, there's there's some arguments on multiple sides, right? And But I think as an artist, there's a good argument on why you would want to break even and go ahead and do it anyway. But let me finish this before we get there. Because she has a lot of a lot of stuff that she's revealing out here. Number one, let's start in the second paragraph. Profits being down across the board is fine for an artist like me. I'm lucky, but for pretty much every artist selling less tickets than I am, touring has become a demented struggle to break even or face debt. For some, touring is completely out of the question, even if they were to sell the whole thing out. Even if you sell it out, touring is out of the question. You can't do it. The math ain't mathing. Well, that wasn't her words. The math doesn't make sense, <laughs> right? But the math ain't mathing. Understandably, all of this takes a toll on crews, on promoters, on artists. You'll notice a ton of artists canceling shows, citing mental health concerns in the past year, which go -to. that is go -to. been a huge thing yeah. this year. I, I ain't gonna lie. I didn't think about it till she said that, right? And I really think the stress of this stuff is a factor. We're a collection of the world's most sensitive flowers who also spent the last two years inside. And maybe the task of creating a space where people's pain and grief and jubilation can be held night after night with a razor thin profit margin and dozens of people to pay is feeling like a teeny bit much. All right. So she's saying they're going through it now. Now, let's let's be towards the rest of this. Me personally, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Play on words. Pun intended. God dang, Lord. But I'm straight, though. You know, I was just empathizing with the peasants. <laughs> 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 
Oh, this is wild. You guys have to come to shows in such a man. And you guys have come to the shows in such mammoth numbers. Dang, she's flexing. Oh, man, she's flexing. We sold out almost 20. Bro, now this shit feels like a troll. I didn't even get to the end when we were when I was reading this before. We sold out almost 20,000 tickets in London. Like, what the hell? And not have having crippling stage fright hanging over me for the first time since such a fucking blessing that you could tell me I had to cycle from a city to city and I'd still be loving it. But I'm not immune to the stress. Just a month ago, I was looking at a show that was pretty undersold and panicking only for it to sell. <laughs> only for it to still sell out the uh, the remaining 2000 tickets in 10 days. Wild stuff. <laughs> Yo, oh, bro, this shit just, oh, man, it gets funny. I wanted to put out, I wanted to put all of this stuff in your minds to illustrate that nothing's simple when it comes to the touring at the moment. And if your faves are confusing you with their erratic moves, some of this could be playing a part. Man, <laughs> golly, man. Oh, man. So you you already called it like earlier like i said i didn't i didn't finish those last lines it just got crazy and crazy when you know that last lines how she like turned the tide but you basically summed it up when you're like man this is like rich artist problems the yeah. way she, she spoke of it um dang man uh, early art the way she words it makes it sound like rich yes. artist. I, I do think it is an issue that every oh, artist, yes. yeah, every artist is touring is dealing with because I, I got facts, some facts, artists, facts, facts. artists homies touring right now that like I have one that's on tour that couldn't take his whole team because just taking his DJ and his tour manager put him at break even. Anybody else would put him in the negative. Mm -hmm. And it's like, damn, bro. Like, so he literally took the bare minimum of people I need. My tour manager and my DJ. Everybody yep. else, yeah, I watch the shit for Instagram. <laughs> you know, so. I agree. I, so it's, it's real artist problems. Yeah. And she did allude to it. So it's something we got to get into. All right. It is real artist problems. Yes. The way she said it, yeah. it was like a rich artist problems, <laughs> you know. Um, so. Because you you do have these people who are not, like she said, they're not able to sell what she sold mm. and they don't have the fan base to, she's probably not making anywhere near what she normally would make, but she's taking a lower profit mm. and then you're profiting crazy on the back end from maybe merch and all these additional things. Well, I don't even want to say the back end because merch is, is, is factored into your touring, right? A lot of times, yeah. but she still probably has additional things to continue to upsell and make money for where you have a lot of artists that, yeah, touring is not an option. And that was your way to build your fan base, right? You're in that that phase of your career where you should be touring as much as possible to add and connect with your fans. So then you can go on that next stage where, hey, I've made a song that's and got enough awareness for it, well, or maybe a project, a set of songs that's got enough awareness for me to do a small tour, connect with people personally, and then I could come back and hit a bigger lick with my music. And now, not only can it do well from our marketing, but we have these real people in the world that we've connected with all over that, you know, um, can that, that can make a deeper connection with me and support me on a whole other level, right? That's that phase. And it's like, how do I make that phase happen? If shit, the big artists are suffering, we've now squeezed everything we can out of it. So I haven't seen as many artists. I haven't seen as many of the smaller artists take advantage of touring like that. Wow. Just, just because, yeah, right? Yeah. And I remember Troy Carter said this. I was on this Zoom. This is probably March, not March. Let's just say in the first half of the year, like the pandemic, had, we had only been in a pandemic and like lockdown for maybe a month or two. Mm. And we did a Zoom chat and, you know, everybody was like, oh, man, the industry is going to be lo locked down for another month or another month or three months. Right. But people were thinking it was going to be good by the end of the year. Yeah. Like A lot of people are still trying to spread that noise. I wasn't believing it, yeah. but it got validated when um, Troy Carter, he was it was on his call. It was so funny because YG had got on. I, I think I yeah, sent you that, yeah, right? Yeah, and he was having yeah. like hood <laughs> dude problems, like using Zoom for the first time, trying yeah, to figure it out. Yeah. Watching YG try to get up, make Zoom work was hilarious, man. <laughs> um, man, I fuck with YG. But he, <laughs> Troy Carter was talking about how Live Nation was, um, he had talked to some people and basically he was like, yeah, touring, it's not going to be back till like 2022. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, it was 2020. Yeah. It, was like, it was basically just like not a chance. So don't even think about it. And then even alluding to like big artists will be the first ones to return because, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of times the opportunities for the smaller artists are through bigger artists anyway. Like yeah. I'm I'm touring. Everything's set up around the bigger artists in the industry. And then the rest of the touring kind of funnels through that. So that's a part of it. Yeah. So if you're not one of those, you really have to finesse to, to make this happen. All right. And we see this in any kind of marketplace. When shit goes down, right, you have the top of the top and the bottom of the bottom survive. What do I mean by that? Like if you look at clothing, because bottom of the bottom sounds bad, not exactly what I mean. But look at clothing or a provider for something. Let's just say apparel. So you can go all the way to the bottom and look at a low cost provider and look at somebody like Walmart the bottom of the bottom or city trends or something. And then you got in the middle, <laughs> right? These other providers. And then you go to Louis Vuitton, mm. and Gucci and up and up from there. Those people survive because they're the highest profit, right? Or highest cost for a specific audience. And then you have the low cost audience, but the middle class it's always a part that gets squeezed out, whether it's middle class jobs or middle class companies, because they aren't hard enough in a niche. You, you can't charge more because your customer base doesn't have that type of money and you don't have the brand to validate charging more. And you can't charge less because your operation ain't set up yeah. to be able to handle charging less. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the issue that artists are basically figuring out right now is like, damn, us middle class artists are the ones that are suffering and us who are trying to become middle class artists are suffering. But you know, the artist who's still just in his bedroom, <laughs> like yeah. trying to make shit shake, he ain't worried about tour problems. Yeah. Right. And like Lord said, my empathy, my, my, <laughs> you know, my emotions are suffering, but from a profit standpoint and a sustainability standpoint for my fan base, I'm good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to be able to weather this storm. So that's really what we're seeing here. Just, the, the sheer economics of of it and it's kind of why it's like it's always scary to be middle class bro you got to figure out how to like get to one side or the other whether we got the financial side of it in terms of huge fan base and small fan base right yeah. then you have the middle class as well where it comes to branding within a niche right so I always reference Playboy Cardi because he's like just easy bro and it's it's a very clear what that fan base looks like um and he's like the top of it right mm. that that niche right he's one of those guys now you can start adding yeet there and all that right who are coming in that same space those people are going to be good right but that niche is going to go away in some years right it, there's always the copycats yeah right those copycats a lot of them won't be around yeah. But the ones who made it to that top and were that or, or the people are going to be good. The people who are trying to play around. And I'm just going to do this kind of sound because it's popular, but never really committing to anything and building a specific fan base. They're going to find trouble. All right. And that same thing goes into. Let me try to think of it. We thought we saw this in a, a SoundCloud space. All right. Now, there was a lot of SoundCloud artists. There's only a few at the top of that specific niche. A lot yeah. of people don't necessarily look at it. You know, a lot of SoundCloud rap, quote unquote, didn't make it to full blown commercial. But as long as you were the king of that specific moment, right, or that specific culture, you'll always be good. Yeah. Because as you know, people aren't involved in that part of the culture as much over the years, 10 years from now, whenever they want to dip back, they're just going to dip back to the top. They're not going to dip back for the most part to like find a new person that they barely heard and didn't connect with. You know, you want your nostalgia at that point. So like that's, that's what um, this tour reminds me of. Like, again, just the economics of it. And it relates to so much of what artists are going through, but like bringing it back to lower again, though, because I feel like we got, some more there, there's so many other points that we can bring out of this is there something <laughs> what were your first thoughts especially on the second half because we kind of talked about the, the first half like when she got into how much tickets she sold um just the problems that are going on the crew promoters did you have any thoughts yourself i mean my my first thought was 
I mean, she's right. Like I said, I, I, I've talked to clients, got artist friends on tour, citing a lot of the same issues. Yeah. Second thing I thought was like, man, this is a also a genre specific out, uh, issue, I think. You know, mm. going back to it, it's like, I don't know, let's compare like rap to pop, right? Like pop concerts, you expect a much higher production value than you would necessarily for even a rapper of the same size sometimes, right? Like, like yeah. if I were going to see, I don't know, Lil Baby versus Taylor Swift, I'm expecting Taylor Swift concert to be the more the more yeah. cinematic in terms Facts. of production value, right? Yeah. Like Lil Baby can get away with some lasers, make some smoke, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> nice outfit on and like, you know, yeah. we good. Taylor Swift gonna have the costume, it's gonna be, I don't know, dancers right. and all this. Like not shit, shipping right? the stage out. Yeah, shipping the stage out, like all this, like this whole <laughs> stuff. So I also think part of it is a, is a genre specific um, issue. Yeah. Rappers and rap in general tends to be the most lean of, of all the music genres. R and B, pop, anything that needs some musicality elements to it tends to be the most, you know, most expensive aspect. Like I mentioned with my friend, my friend only had to take his DJ and his tour manager. If he was, you know, an artist that needed a full band or some shit like that, I don't know what he would have did. You know, right. so I don't know how he would have made it work, but it worked out because of the, the the genre and type of music that he made. So that was the second thing I thought I was like, man, this is this is pop artist problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least at the level she's talking about it. Right. Third thing I thought about is like. The the way she expressed the message made me feel like it was more of like a like a ploy to get fans to buy tickets to the shows coming up. Let's talk about it. Because uh like I mentioned earlier, this was a newsletter sent out to her fans, so mm -hmm. email only newsletter. So this message is really only being spread to people like you and me because we, we see on the publications. I'm assuming somebody in the publication got word of it. And so it's not like she made like this big deal about it, like she's trying to like change the industry or like rally everybody together to find a solution. We've ran enough email phones before. Why well, know like, you know, most email phones, you have an email that specifically is meant to appeal to emotion. Yeah. <laughs> like almost every savvy email market is like, yo, that shit needs to be in there somewhere. Tug at their heartstrings, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what did, and what did this email prep for? One, like you said, empathizing with her for sales, right? It's like, man, you know she really struggling and she needs this because yeah. it's tough on her. Maybe not as much as everybody, right? But it's tough on her. And I think that's part of what the save face of, hey, I'm doing good though, right? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't begging y'all. I made you empathize, but yeah. then I flipped it and was like, ah, I'm but good. I'm good though, I'm, I'm good. good. You know, don't worry about me. <laughs> don't worry about me. It's, you ask your girl what's wrong. Oh, no, I'm good, shawty. Nah, come on. <laughs> you, you already know. So they playing that trick. But on the other side, what if something goes wrong? You also are preparing them yeah, for that too. Yeah, prepping you for if I decide to cancel any of these tour dates. Mm -hmm. about thing, like, oh, I get it. You know, she's probably not selling a lot of tickets and she's going through mental health stuff, which is all valid reasons. But yeah, like you said, like now I'm, I'm, I'm it's not shocking now. I don't feel caught off guard by it because it's like, if I'm a fan and I got this letter, deep down, you know, it's a possibility. Every time I read shit like that from ours, I'm like, oh shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, <laughs> they're going to do it, bro. It's, it's coming. Like, they're about to pull the rug out from underneath all of us. So, <laughs> That was what made it weird to me is I felt like, okay, she can't be trying to make it an industry conversation because I felt like a video or something that could have went viral a lot quicker would have hit harder. Like, article is only going. Like, I've really only seen this talk about like a handful of Instagram pages, all the blogs. She ain't really moved like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, not outside like the industry, right? Industry people are having this conversation, but consumers aren't having this conversation. And then that also made me think like, what do we do to fix it? Are we saying that Crews shouldn't be, you know, uh, desire to be paid more. Are we saying that, you know, um, like you were saying earlier, like these tour uh, bus companies that now know, hey, bro, these motherfuckers really want to go on tour. I got all the buses. I can have the leverage here. What person in their right mind wouldn't charge more in that situation? You know what I'm saying? Like, what business wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. start to go up on their prices? So that's why I was saying earlier to me, the only, only, maybe it's a couple different solutions. I see either, Brands are probably going to start being a lot more involved with touring, right? So let's mm -hmm. imagine, you know, Drake and 21 Savage, her loss brought to you by Coke. It's, it's probably going to get to that because the music industry is no stranger to just letting brands yeah. put their name on some shit for some money, right? So that to me is probably like one of the more natural first steps. Second, the funnel is going to have to be optimized for something else. And I think tours are going to start getting looked at more as just a necessary marketing cost, right? Like the same way. Um, like your ads and your influences are. So, bro, your tour isn't maybe necessarily going to be the, the cash machine that it was 5, 10, 15 years ago. Now this is just another marketing cost. to so put you on the road, 
to push these people to something else that we know we're going to make more money off of. All right, that one right there. As a digital marketer, especially digital first marketer, I, I can really, really resonate with a funnel that you might break even with, maybe even take a little loss, maybe not trying to, but yeah. you take a small profit or you break even to set people up for upsells, right? Yeah. Get it, do it through and through day after day. Cool. My problem with that when it comes to music, I don't think they can take that, right? And the reason I say that is many people, most of the industry already look at the music itself as a loss leader. Mm-hmm. Right, which means we ain't really making money off of this music. That's our advertising, but we're going to make money from other routes, largely touring. That's why it hurt so much. Yeah. So now you're talking about our plan B yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is now going to be to break even again. Yeah. So I got to take them through two hoops just to get the oop. Now, nah, man, I need the money as fast as possible because production, create creative work. It's already capital intensive, mm-hmm. especially at that scale. So I think that's really tough, man. Like I'm all for, again, yeah, doing that, but it got to figure out a way to not, to, not to just break even for sure. Yeah. Like, yeah, not that. I just want to take a quick second and say thanks for watching. And if you want to learn more about marketing and branding and blowing music up in the music industry from people who have done it and continue to do it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button before you click to the next video. Hit that subscribe button now.